So water is water is really unusual. I think we we talked a little about the boiling point being weird um, and how it just doesn't fit into patterns. <coughs> Another weird thing about water is that it can act as an acid and as a base. So it can be an acid or a base. And we saw with when we talked about dissolving ionic solids that it has a positive end and a negative end and so it can be friends with the cations and it can be friends with the anions. So it's a very versatile molecule. So we have a special word that we use, amphoteric. That means that something can act as an acid or a base. And this prefix here, ampho, where have you seen something like that before? I think frogs. Amphibian? Where do amphibians live? In the water and on the land. Or, right? An amphibious vehicle can drive on land and it can drive in the water. So ampho, or ampho means dual, right? It can be either. So water can act as an acid or a base. Um, and what's really kind of kind of strange about water, this, this equation is probably coming up and I'm jumping the gun, but oh well. This seems like a strange reaction to happen, but it does. Water can act as an acid and a base with itself. So here we have this water molecule um, it's kind of hard to see which, which one is it lining up with. But let's say this one is accepting a proton, so it's acting as the base and becoming H3O+. This one is acting as an acid, donating a proton to that one and becoming OH-. Now why would they do that? That doesn't seem like something that they would want to do. Because usually things tend towards being the same. right? And here we're separating charges and that just doesn't seem like a really good idea. Well, the thing is, water does this, but only to a teeny, teeny, tiny extent. So in pure water, at regular temperatures, the concentration of each of these ions is 10 to the minus 7 moles per liter. 0 0.0000001 moles per liter. Large concentration, small concentration. Small, really small. So this reaction happens, but it favors the left direction very heavily. It only happens a teeny tiny bit. But water can act as an acid or a base. And so what this is telling us, um, we don't really learn much about um, equilibrium constants, but this is a constant. And it tells us that the concentration of hydrogen ion times the concentration of hydroxide ion in water is always going to be equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 14. If one of these goes up, the other one goes down. And the product of their concentrations is always the same. So no matter what the solution contains, if we add acid to it, if we add base to it, the product is always the same. I could prove it to you, but we don't have time for that, so you're just going to have to kind of believe it to me, believe me about it. So then we have three possible situations. We could have the hydrogen ion concentration being equal to the hydroxide ion concentration. And that's what happens in pure water, and we call that a neutral solution. It's not acidic and it's not basic. It's right neutral, evenly balanced. If the hydrogen ion concentration is higher than the hydroxide ion concentration, we consider that to be an acidic solution. And here when we're talking about H+, we're just being lazy. We really mean H3O+. How could you get extra hydrogen ions in water? What if we added an acid to the water, right? What if we added a strong acid like 
HCl. So HCl dissociates and forms hydrogen ions and chloride ions. It all comes apart. So we've added hydrogen ions to the water. So now the hydrogen ion concentration is larger than the hydroxide ion concentration. This is an acidic solution, and you get an acidic solution by adding acid to the water. A basic solution is the opposite. If you add a base to the solution, then the hydroxide ion concentration is going to be larger than the hydrogen ion concentration. But regardless of which is larger or how much it's larger, the product is always 10 to the minus 14. What happens when you add chlorine to the pool? Well, chlorine itself is not strictly acidic or basic. And so that's not going to change the, the pH of your pool very much, the acid level. But people, people do add muriatic acid to swimming pools. Muriatic acid is just a common name for hydrochloric acid. And you do that to adjust the acid balance of your pool. And so there's, there's a lot of very complicated things involving pH and buffers and stuff that we're not going to get into. But let's look at this. In an acidic aqueous solution, so they're telling us it's acidic, which statement below is correct? Would the hydrogen ion concentration be less than 10 to the minus 7? 10 to the minus 7 is the concentration when it's neutral. In a neutral solution, H plus is equal to OH minus, and they are equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 7. If that's neutral, then is this going to be an acidic con solution where the, the H plus is less? No. So that's not correct. Yes, it, it does. Because if these are the same, then we could say that they are x x squared. If this is if this is x and that's x, right? Because they're equal, that's x squared. If you take the square root of ten to the minus fourteenth you get 10 to the minus 7. So B, hydrogen ion concentration greater than 10 to the minus 7. Is that correct about an acidic solution? Yes. How about C, hydroxide ion concentration greater than 10 to the minus 7? No, that would be basic. Hydrogen ion concentration less than hydroxide. Is that acidic? No, that's basic. So the middle, the level, is they are equal, and they are each 10 to the minus 7. If it's acidic, we have more hydrogen ion concentration, more hydrogen ions, the concentration will be greater than 10 to the minus 7. That means that the hydroxide ion concentration will be lower and be less than 10 to the minus 7. And the opposite's true for a basic solution. So here we have, it says, in an, in an aqueous solution in which the hydroxide ion concentration is equal to 2 times 10 to the minus 10 molar, the hydrogen ion concentration equals what? And the solution is blank. And so here in the choices, we have concentrations. So they're asking us what the concentration of the hydrogen ion is, and then they're asking to identify, is this solution acidic or basic? We can actually answer the last part without doing any calculations. This hydroxide ion concentration, is that greater than or less than 10 to the minus 7? Be careful, because this is a minus 10. Is that greater than 10 to the minus 7 or less than 10 to the minus 7? 
the larger negative, the smaller it is. So this is less than 10 to the minus 7. So if the hydroxide ion concentration has gone down, is that a basic solution? Somebody say no. No. It's an acidic solution. So we can see just, just from looking at that, that it's got to be one of these. Well, how can we calculate the hydrogen ion concentration? They gave us a formula. The equation, H plus times OH minus equals 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. We have two variables, H plus and OH minus. If we know one, we can calculate the other. Let's rearrange the equation first. That's always a good idea. So we want to know what the hydrogen ion concentration is. So we're going to divide by the hydroxide ion concentration. So that will cancel out. And then here, we're dividing by the hydroxide ion concentration. So the hydrogen ion concentration is going to equal 1 times 10 to the minus 14 divided by whatever the hydroxide is. Well, they told us what it is. So this is going to be 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14 divided by 2.0 times 10 to the minus 10. And here again, we need to know how to do scientific notation. So use that EE button on your calculator correctly. So the numerator is 1 EE minus 14 divided by 2 EE minus 10. And we come up with 5 times 10 to the minus 5th. So it's 5.0 times 10 to the minus 5. So it's going to be C. Any questions? This looks all complicated, but it's the same process as doing something like A times B equals 10. If B equals 2, What's A? That looks a little more simple, doesn't it? Well, we'll divide both sides by B, and we find out that A is equal to 10 divided by B. Didn't leave myself any room here, because I'm making this up right now. I said B equals 10, I'm sorry, B equals 2. So then I put in 2 for B, 10 divided by 2 equals 5. If you can do this, you can do this. It just looks fancy and complicated. Any questions? So this is for Wednesday.